Good morning, everyone. I trust that you'll be blessed as you hear from God's word. Come, let's pray. Our Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray that as we hear from your word, that you may open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears. Help us, O oh God, to listen to what you have to say. Help us to understand what you have to say. Help us, Lord, to apply what you have said so that we may live a life that brings glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. Friends, in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic had a devastating impact upon the education of our children. The sad reality is that many teachers passed away from COVID. An article I was reading recently mentioned that 1,700 teachers passed away since the outbreak began. And who knows what the figure will be this year. Last year, you'll remember that the school dates and the teaching curriculum had to be adjusted to complete the academic year. And as we begin this year, there is much uncertainty as to when schools will reopen. Friends, as much as a formal education is necessary for the growth and development of our children, we need to be mindful as Christians of their spiritual growth and development. And with this in mind, the title of my sermon is Spiritual Lessons for Our Children. And as we reflect on this subject, I want to draw your attention to three truths this morning. Firstly, I want, to, I want to remind you that children need to be brought to Jesus. Listen to what Mark records for us in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verse 13. Mark says, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Well, notice how Jesus responds to the children being brought to him. The disciples rebuked the children. The disciples thought the children were a problem, but not so for Jesus. In fact, notice his response. Jesus welcomes them. He said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Do not stop the children from coming to me. Notice also that he blesses them. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. And then notice also he saves them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And so, my brother, my sister, as we reflect on the spiritual growth and development of our children, we need to bring them to Jesus. I wonder, as you think about that this morning, have you been doing that as a parent? Have you been bringing your child to the Lord Jesus? Well, secondly, we need to remember that children need spiritual guidance. Now, let me draw your attention to two ways in which we as parents should offer spiritual guidance to our children. Firstly, we offer spiritual guidance through teaching, teaching them from God's word. Have a look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. Listen to what God's word says. The Lord is speaking to Moses here as he speaks to the Israelites, as he speaks to you and I, and he says these words, these commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. 
impress them on your children. Notice that? We are to impress them on our children. We are to talk about them when you sit. God's word, God's command. We need to talk to our children when we sit down at home. When we walk along the road, we are to talk to our children to teach them God's word. When we lie down, we are to talk to our children, we are to teach them God's word. And when we get up, we are to talk to our children, we are to teach them God's word. Notice there, as every day part of life, the things that we do every single day, sit, walk, stand, talk, get up, we need to be teaching our children from God's word. Then he goes on to say, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Let God's word forever be in front of us, is what God is saying here. We need to be teaching our children God's word. Another passage we can look at is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. Notice what it says. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. Because you know those from whom you learnt it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures. Paul is speaking about Timothy here. He says to Timothy, and how from infancy, from just a young child, from infancy, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. We are to teach our children God's word. Another passage we can look at is Luke chapter 2, verse 51. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, speaking about Jesus. Verse 52. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and God men. Notice that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. Well, how did Jesus grow in wisdom and stature? How did Jesus grow spiritually, in other words? Well, one might argue that he did so because he was God. But I want to suggest that he grew in wisdom and stature because Mary and Joseph took the time to teach Jesus God's word. Remember, Jesus was a young boy, a small child, and his parents sat him down like every Jewish parent would, and they would teach them God's word. And Jesus was taught God's word by Mary and Joseph. And as a result, he grew in wisdom and stature. My brother, my sister, if Jesus needed to be taught the word, then how much so our children? Children need spiritual guidance. And we as parents need to be teaching them. Well, secondly, we offer spiritual guidance through training. Listen to what Proverbs 22 verse 6 says. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Notice that as parents, we are called to train our children in the way they should go and not in the way they want to go. Children may have their own desires. I want to go in this way or I want to go in that way. My friends are moving in this direction. I want to move with them in that direction or I want to move with them in this direction. But God's word says we need to train them in the way they should go, in the way God wants them to go, and not in the way they want to go. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. See, the picture here is of a young tree that has been planted. In nature, you see every tree has a natural bend, a natural shape, and as it grows, it will grow according 
to that natural shape. I, a few years ago, planted a fruit tree in my garden and I noticed that the young tree was bending in one direction. And I knew that if the tree continues to grow bending in that direction, eventually when it becomes too big, uh, it will have that bend. And when it produces fruit, it might be too heavy and break as a result. So I had to set it straight when it was still young. I put a stake next to it. I tied it to the stake so that it may grow in the way I want it to grow. My brother, my sister, that's exactly what you and I need to do for our children as we train them to grow in the way God desires them to grow. And friends, the most effective form of training is not just speaking and teaching them just verbally. That's important. Yes, we spoke about that. But a very, very effective way of training is by setting a godly example. Listen to 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 5. Remember earlier on, we saw how from infancy he has known the Holy Scriptures. But how did he know the Holy Scripture from infancy? Well, here's the answer here. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lewis, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Where did Timothy learn God's word? Well, he learned it from his grandmother. He learned it from his mother. He learned to follow their godly example. See, my brother, my sister, that is what Timothy's grandmother and mother did for him. They set a godly example so that he may follow. And as we reflect on setting a godly example, we need to remember that those who set an ungodly example will be judged by God accordingly. You see, there are two kinds of people in the world, those who will set the godly example and then those who will set an ungodly example. And listen to what God says about those who set an ungodly example for children to follow. Matthew 18, verse 6. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, to disobey me, to turn their backs on me, listen to what God says. It would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Oh, what terrifying words these are, my brothers and sisters. What terrifying words of judgment this is. If you set an ungodly example for a child who wants to follow the Lord Jesus, but if you set an ungodly example for them, Jesus says it would be better for you to put a millstone, a huge stone around your neck, to tie it around your neck and to throw yourself in the depths of the sea. My brother, my sister, as we train our children to develop spiritually, we need to do so by setting a godly example. If we are saying to our child, you need to walk in this way, God's way, we need to be walking in this way, God's way. We can't say to our child, walk in this way, God's way, when we are not walking in this way, God's way. The Bible calls that hypocrisy. My brother, my sister, let none of us be a hypocrite this morning. Friends, in order to effectively teach and train our children, we need to be familiar with the subject matter. Isn't that true? You can't teach what you don't know. If you don't know God's word, you will not be able to teach them God's word. You can't train them if you don't know how to walk the way yourself. Can you imagine sending your child to a cricket coach or a soccer coach who has never kicked a soccer ball before or has never held a cricket bat or ball in his hand? Will that be an effective coach? Will that coach develop your child? Of course not. 
You need to send them to someone who knows what they are talking about, who has experience, who has played the game itself. And likewise, for you and I to effectively teach and train our children uh, to develop them spiritually, we ourselves need to be grounded in God's word. Let me ask you, my brother, my sister, this morning, are you grounded in God's word? Are you teaching them and training them by setting a godly example? Remember, if you are not teaching and training your children, someone else is going to do it for you. And that someone else may not necessarily be a godly person. And that someone else may cause your child to be led astray. Later on in life, when you look upon your child and you are frustrated because your child is misbehaving, because your child is living a reckless life, because your child has disappointed you, because your child is now finding themselves in prison, you ask yourself, what have I done wrong as a parent? Well, you fail to teach them. You fail to train them. You fail to set a godly example. My brother, my sister, we are called to teach and train our children, we are called to give them spiritual guidance. I trust that you will do that as you think about the year ahead. I trust that you'll make this one of your priorities. I want to teach and train my child to walk in the ways of the Lord and set the example for them to follow. Well, thirdly, lastly, we need for our children to identify with Jesus. Acts chapter 16, verse 30. He then brought them out. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This is the jailer speaking to Paul and Silas. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them, washed them, washed their wounds. And then immediately he and all his family were baptized. And I'm quite certain that in his family were children. I'm quite certain that amongst his servants, there were children as well. So it wasn't just him who was baptized wasn't just the adults in the family that were baptized. It was he and his family, his children as well. The jailer brought them into the house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole family, including his children as well. We need for our children to identify with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand this morning that baptism does not save. It just makes you a little bit wet. Whether you have a sprinkling or whether you are immersed underwater, it just makes you a little bit more wet. But what baptism does, it is a sign proclaiming to the outside world, to your family, friends, that you identify with Jesus that you belong to Jesus, that you are a Christian. That is what it does for you and I. It shouts out loudly to people who have come to witness your baptism, I am a Christian. Whether as an adult or as a child, I belong to Jesus. My brother, my sister, if you and your children belong to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ, then I... Uh, want to suggest to you, if your children have not been baptized yet, then I trust that you will prayerfully consider that when church reopens and gets back to normal, that you will speak to your pastor and that you will get your children baptized so that they may identify with the Lord Jesus, so that they may proclaim to their friends and their family members, to the unbelieving world, I am a Christian, I belong to the Lord Jesus. So as we wrap up my, this morning, my brother and my sister, yes, formal education, going to school is necessary. It's very, very important, yes. 
But I believe more important is our spiritual development, our walk with the Lord. And when it comes to our children, my brother, my sister, you and I as parents need to bring our children to Jesus. Have you introduced your child to the Lord Jesus? As parents, uh, we need to uh, make sure that we offer spiritual guidance to our children by teaching them from God's word, by training them in the way they should go, by setting them the godly example. And certainly, we need to make sure that our children can identify with the Lord Jesus. I trust that you've been doing that as a parent. For those of you uh, who are planning on having children, well, I trust that you'll take God's word to heart so that you may put these words into practice so that uh, your son, your daughter, as they grow up, may grow up in the fear and in the knowledge of God Almighty. If you haven't done so and your children are growing up, or maybe they've grown up already, but why don't you pray for them? Pray that where you failed to teach them and train them, that God, in his grace and mercy, may draw them to himself.